welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm making a continuation video to the first alpha size video that I posted. So ever since I posted this video in March, I've gotten a lot of questions from you guys. I said I would make another video explaining more of the reasons and kind of answering more of the questions that you guys have about this company, about my experience there. I went to UCLA as an economics major. I graduated and I moved to New York to work at a company called AlphaSites. So a little background on the company and my experience there. AlphaSites basically connects business leaders who have questions to the world's leading experts in those fields. My role there was an associate so I only worked at OfficeSites for a total of six months. I really did enjoy my time in the New York offices, but I did quit the role after six months. Point one, technically I was a Mandarin speaking associate. So I was supposed to train for one year in the New York office. And then I was supposed to go to China to build out this like division in the Shanghai office. So there's gonna be a little bit of variety depending on which office you actually apply for and accept your offer for. So the New York office is currently their biggest office. What I was really looking forward to was more of that entrepreneurial role in the Shanghai office, which was a lot smaller at the time, like around 30 or 40 people. At the time, this was actually exactly the role that I wanted but then when I started working on the role and like started adapting to life in New York I kind of started getting cold feet about the whole transfer and that's just honestly like a personal thing so I'm not an international student and most of my family and close friends are like either in LA or in now New York a few months in I was kind of getting cold feet about moving to Shanghai and starting the rest of my career there that was actually one of the big reasons why I was reconsidering my role here. So I think after working there for six months, I can really kind of tell what kind of people or qualities really excel in that role. I realized that although I had some of the qualities, my strengths were perhaps in other qualities that weren't really needed for the role. I've always been more of a creative person and like especially working at a company like Alpha Sites where they're a little bit more structured and like methodical in the workflow. Like you have certain tools that you use. There are certain ways that you organize and touch base with your teams for progress. It just felt like a very rigid system to me. But two months in, I was like, Oh, like, I just like, I don't know, like, I feel like this is not it for me. By like five or six months in, I was like, I'm quitting this job, like, this is not for me. But that being said, a lot of you guys that I did get the chance to talk to a little bit more seem like you'd be a way better fit for the role than I would be. I also quit my job literally a month before the COVID pandemic happened. It was kind of crazy timing in that sense. And right now, if you're working a job that you don't love, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you quit because of COVID, but at the time I just had no idea. Um, I quit my job early January and COVID like really kind of started happening around February. Now though, like reflecting back on it, I am really glad that I left the role. I've had some of you ask if there's like a toxic corporate culture. I would say no. There is no toxic corporate culture here. Yes, there is like a quota that you should be trying to hit, but people there really are super nice and people really get to know each other and like become friends on their teams. They really do have a good corporate culture. I wouldn't worry about that. It's just, I think more of like, if you are individually a good fit or not for the role and if you can see a future in this field. I'm not sure about the transition during COVID time, but like when I was working in their physical office, they would always have different like fun caterers come in, always really really like celebrating the holidays. So it's not like a toxic culture where you just go in and don't talk to anyone and work and then leave. <laughs> like it's definitely a place that you can grow a lot as a individual and also as a professional. So I don't have enough experience to say whether or not Alpha Sites really has a lot of hours compared to other companies out there. But I would say like because of just the dynamic timelines and the information that the clients are seeking, it is going to be a little more high pressure. There's going to be periods in the workday where you're going to be like time crunched because you're trying to turn around a project like in an hour. For those of you who are interested in the expert network industry, there are actually a lot of firms in this industry and I applied to a couple of other firms before I accepted my offer at Alpha Sites. So there's a couple of small firms, more like boutique expert networking firms in New York. I would do some more research into like the competitive landscape and other players in this industry. But from my experience at Alphasites, like what I've heard from my coworkers and stuff, I feel like they definitely have the best work culture out of 
like most of those. Um, I mean, compared to like the other big players in the series, like I definitely think Alpha Sites is like the way to go. So if you're considering an offer from Alpha Sites, just know that you are getting a cream of the crop offer. I just like personally wasn't a good fit. I've kind of just known that I'm not like super cut out for a corporate life. It does come down to like an individual level, but I would say that like Alpha Sites is really good for scouting for their talent. If you are currently like interviewing with them or applying for them, you probably do have like the base traits that it would take to be successful and happy in that role. If you're driven, you want to like set your own goals and hit them, that's a great trait to have. And probably everyone working there has that trait. Other things is like being emotionally intelligent and like social, liking to talk to people because at the end of the day, you are going to be talking to people all day long. I've always considered myself way more of a people's person than a numbers person. Any like really detailed number crunching or like data modeling, or, like, anything like that, I'm like, not a fan of. Ironically, I was an economics major. When I saw Alpha Sites, I was like, wow, like I think this is it for me. You get to work with cool people, you get to talk to people all day. There's no Excel involved, international work opportunity, macro glance at the business landscape as a whole. This position is cut out for me. So at the time, I was like, I want to work here. That's it. That's not to say though that if you like numbers, this role isn't gonna be good for you. I'm just saying it's completely possible to excel at this role even if you are not a numbers driven person. Hope that makes sense. There's people of all different majors working here. So I wouldn't say like you need to have a business background to like this role, to excel in this role. Um, or to even do this role. It definitely helps, but a lot of that they'll train you on as you're working there. If you wanna know if you're a good fit for this role, you're a good fit for this role if help you guys along in your decision, I'm just going to run a laundry list of things that you need to be really passionate about. You need to be passionate, like really passionate about at least one of the following things. Hedge funds, market trends, investment trends, corporate structure, venture capitalism, sales, money, management, whether that's team or account management, growing an account, and possibly the city or slash the lifestyle that comes with the job. I've also had like some of you guys ask about exit opportunities after this role. You can look at some of AlphaSite's alumni on LinkedIn and they're really doing a variety of different things. I've seen people go to like tech companies like Google or Facebook, more on like the account management side or the like, marketing side perhaps. I've seen people, definitely seen people feed into direct finance roles, consulting. So you can really take the role and go a lot of places with it. And a lot of people stay at the company and move up in the company just because they love the people and the culture and the work so much. It's a really exciting space to be in. So I wouldn't worry about that. Like I definitely think the exit opportunities are plenty unless you're trying to go into something really niche or specific like research or like video production or like, you know, like that might be a little bit harder. For those of you guys like in the interview process, I'd really recommend getting to know their website really well. They have a lot of great information on their website. Even though I got so much exposure from like biotech to AI to like agriculture, um, like so many different things, the only projects that really sparked my passion were the ones like in the consumer B2C space, in the retail space, so whether it was like retail fashion, retail lifestyle, retail beauty, those were the only projects that really ignited my passion and I remember when I was working on those projects I was like getting foam. That kind of like also factored into my decision. I started to realize I do actually have a specific interest towards like the consumer retail B2 C space. But yeah, it just like took me a while to get around to actually um, fully making this video and also like having the nerve to post it on the internet. <laughs> but I really hope that this is helpful to you guys. And if you guys have other questions, feel free to email me. If you have any questions or just want to see what I'm up to now, you can find me on my socials subscribe to this channel and I'm gonna be talking about my daily work life now thank you guys so much for watching